Hello everybody and welcome back to the second shelf and another tag video. Um, if you're following me you know that in 2018 I did really badly uh, with the tags I was tagged in and I carried that over to 2019 because there is still a backlog of tags and one of them is the art movement tag created by Miriam from Between Life and Lines, Lines and Life. I leave a link to her original tag video down below. And this is one of the older ones and for the life of me, I don't remember who tagged me. So if you tag me, I'm sorry that I don't remember it. Um, but it's an interesting tag combining, you know, various uh, periods of art with a book you have to pick that sort of fits that period. And there are eight prompts and two bonus prompts um, in this tag. And as you know how much I, you know, wander off and waffle on and waffle on, so I have, I'll try to keep this video under 20 minutes. Anyway, the first prompt is Baroque. Uh, name an extravagant character in a book or a character who leads an extravagant life. And for this prompt, I pick Colette Cherie. Um, uh, Colette is one of my teenage favorites. Uh, she was a, a, a French author, end of the 19th century until the middle of the 20th century. Uh, she died in 1954 and Cherie was published first in 1920. Um, it centers around uh, Léa de Lonval. It's set in Paris, beginning of the 20th century, and Léa is an aging courtesan and the book is about her last and very stormy love affair with a man half her age who is referred to in the book as Cherie. And the life of this courtesan in Paris at that time is lavish and extravagant. So I think it's a perfect fit for this first prompt. The second prompt is Impressionism. Name a book that left a lasting impression on you and tell us why. And for this, I also pick an older favorite of mine, and that's Patricia Dunker's book, Hallucinating Foucault, which was published in 1996. Patricia Dunker is an um, English writer and teacher, um, and I read this book, I think, fairly soon after it was released. So in my, you know, sort of early 20s or 30s or something. I can't really count that well. But anyway, um, uh, the book is about um, uh, an, a French writer who is called, in the book, Paul Michel, but is, he is a stand-in for the French philosopher uh, Michel Foucault. But it's a work of fiction, so Paul Michel writes fiction, whereas Michel Foucault wrote non-fiction books. And you have this English reader, as uh, the main character is referred to. Um, it's written in the first person, and this English reader is looking for Paul Michel, literally and figuratively. And the book explores the idea of the infatuation of a reader with the work of a writer and what happens when they meet um, and whether that's a good idea at all. But it also explores the life of uh, Michel Foucault differently if he had written fiction. And at the time uh, when I read it, I was uh, completely enthralled by uh, Michel Foucault's real work, his nonfiction work, um, and to find a book that deals with my, you know, um, infatuation with that subject, with Michel Foucault, but in a different way, that really left a, a, an absolute a lasting impression on me. It's, it's a dreamlike book in a way, a very atmospheric and, and very... Um, it's surreal at times, um, and I, I loved it. I, I reread it sort of regularly, and I will certainly reread it this year again. Prompt number three, Expressionism, a book with a very personal and possibly unique outlook on the world. And I didn't have to ponder this question long, uh, because there's one book that stands out for me for this prompt, and that's René Denfield, The Enchanted. Um, uh, if you're following my channel, you know how much I love this book. Um, it's uh, Renée Denfield was um, uh, a crime investigator, so she writes often writes books that uh, involve uh, a criminal investigator. And so in this book, there are two main characters. Um, the one is an, a mute inmate on death row, 
And the other one is The Lady, um, a criminal investigator who tries to unearth facts uh, to keep uh, inmates off death row. Um, and if that sounds grim, it is. But it's also, like the title suggests, enchanted. It's um, almost, it has almost a fairy tale like quality, especially um, the point of view of the mute uh, death row inmate who is not innocent, just to tell you that up front, um, um, but you, who is still very uh, portrayed very much humanely, and he has this um, this dreamlike um, uh, point of view, and there are these horses uh, that picture the, the pictures on on the cover in his dreams, and how. Yeah, it, it's very difficult to explain the plot to you, but for, for this prompt, the, the unique outlook on the world, certainly this the, the outlook on the world and his guilt um, from this uh, death row inmate is absolutely unique. Number four, Surrealism, a book that puts a spin on the reality of our living or a sci-fi book you would recommend. You know how much I love sci-fi and I try to find something that sort of fits both parts of the prompt and I chose Anna Smale's The Chimes which was published in 2015. Anna Smales is a New Zealand author but first and foremost she is a violinist and The Chimes is set in London in an alternative or dystopian future where words are forbidden, writing is forbidden, I should say, and um, music sort of plays the part that writing did um, in the past. And we follow the story of Simon, a young man who came to London in order to find out the truth about his past, but also the truth about um, the world he lives in. And the chimes um, is, is the musical reference um, uh, the, the music plays a big part obviously in this book because there is no written word and no memories of the written word and it's a very strange world uh, but I, I love the setting I love the story there's also a very uh, endearing love story in the center between Simon and another young man who lives in London I, I, I think it's a fantastic book although I know it's not for everybody. Uh, you have to, you know, just get a, a sample and see whether the style uh, of the writing and the world that Anna Smell created um, uh, appeals to you. Um, because it, uh, yeah, I gave the book to a couple of people and they just couldn't, they, they didn't feel anything. But I, I loved it. Number five, Pointillism, a book where the different narratives um, make or paint the bigger picture. Now, I'm that, not that much of a fan of Pointillism, and I, I sometimes get tired of all these of books where you always have different points of views, but sometimes different narratives and different point of views actually serve a purpose. And that's definitely the case in Peng Shepard's debut, debut novel, The Book of M, which was published last year. Um, it's a dystopian um, novel, um, and, and the main premise is that people lose their shadow, and once they do, they will gradually lose all their memories. It over a period of time, sometimes days, sometimes weeks or months, but in the end they will not remember anything about themselves or their history. Um, the book has two main characters, a couple. The woman lost her shadow and then flees because she doesn't want to put her husband through this. So we follow her strand, her narrative, uh, connecting with other people who lost their shadows, um, trying to find refuge in a place that is said to be able to restore memory. We follow the husband looking for his wife and meeting different people he knows uh, from the past there. And these Various narratives then in the end converge really intelligently and paint for the reader the big picture of this world and these uh, characters. 
On to prompt number six. The camera angle slightly different if you noticed because I had to answer the doorbell and had to sit down again. But anyway, don't be disturbed by that. Uh, prompt number six, pop art. A book that criticizes consumerism or makes you look uh, critically at modern times. And for this one, I chose uh, Janina Braski, The United States of, America, uh, of Banana, which was published in 2011. Uh, Brusky is a Puerto Rican author, but this book uh, was written in English, uh, originally the first one of her novels that she wrote in English, um, and it's set in New York, or more precisely uh, the Island of Liberty, the Statue of Liberty, and it's this completely over-the-top tale of three people, um, uh, Hamlet and Zarathustra, and uh, uh, Janina herself, and they are on this mission to free a Puerto Rican prisoner, Sigismondo, who has been imprisoned um, uh, in the Statue of Liberty for over a hundred years by his father, the king. That's the story. And then, of course, the book explores politics and uh, Puerto Rico versus mainland U.S. and being a refugee. Um, and it's, yeah, it's hilarious. It's completely over the top like pop art. Um, and it's a very satirical um, twist on, on a fairy tale, I would say. And I, I highly enjoyed it. Prompt number seven, Dadaism. A weird book. Yeah, Dadaism is definitely weird, or a book that puts a spin on the novel format. And I chose the latter one, the second one of the, the prompts, so a book that puts a spin on the novel format. And my choice is Ruth Oseki, A Tale for the Time Being, first published in 2013. Uh, Ruth Oseki is a Japanese-American author who partly lives in, in Canada. And this book um, is set uh, for one part in Canada on an, a remote island where the protagonist Ruth, who is a writer struggling with her book, uh, lives with her husband. And the other part of the book takes place some years earlier in Japan, in Tokyo, and the main protagonist is a teenage girl called Nao, uh, who contemplates suicide. Uh, Nao is a very intelligent but also very unhappy a um, girl, she grew up uh, in the first part of her life in the United States where her father worked um, for a, a dot-com company, but then the dot-com bubble happens, he, had, he lost his job, the family was moved back to Japan, um, now doesn't have any feeling of going back because it's a strange country for her, she's bullied at school, and then she uh, lives for a while with her grandmother who is a, a Tao a monk um, and this the, the 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 novel really plays first of all with the idea of the difference between an author and the protagonist uh, in that part in Canada where you have Ruth as your main protagonist and you wonder whether it's really Ruth Oseki or uh, whether it's not but it also plays with the with the with the, the this idea of time the connection between the japanese story and the story in canada uh, where Ruth finds a, a, a plus, you know, a lunchbox that obviously belonged uh, to uh, to now. So it it puts a spin on the novel format, and I I really enjoyed this book when I read it back in I think two or three years ago, um, and I reread it um, one or uh, twice, and it it still endears me, and that that spin on the novel format um, is really well done. Prompt number eight, performance art, a book that would make a great movie or play. Um, and I was immediately thinking of Kerry Vaughan's Bannerless Saga. Um, the first one called Bannerless uh, came out, I think, 2017. And the second one is also out, but I think it's, it's a series, at least three books, so there will be more. Um, and the books are all set in this dystopian um, future in the United States, uh, after, you know, ecological and economic uh, collapse. Uh, people live in small sort of family units um, and the main character is Annet of Heaven. No, Haven, Haven, not Heaven, Haven. Um, and she is an investigator. Um, the setting feels almost medieval because you have no 
uh, almost no technology, uh, all the modern stuff we are used to no longer exists. So it has this, even though it's set in the future, it has this sort of medieval feel to it. And it's a really good, both books are really good um, uh, detective stories. And I always love detective stories um, as movies. So I think this one uh, would be a great movie because it has... Um, great stories uh, in each book and it has to solve a murder or another sort of crime in one of the units she travels to. Um, I think the setting would be great for a movie, uh, but, you know, mainly the, the story and the character. So I think the Benalla saga would be perfect uh, for a movie. Yeah, on to the first bonus prompt. Maybe it will be under 20 minutes. Um, the first bonus prompt is a book that features art or is about art in some way. And my choice is Siri Hüstvedt's novel, The Blazing World, first published in 2015, uh, 14, sorry. Um, the main character is Harriet Burden, a middle-aged woman, recently widowed. Her husband was a famous art critic, and now that her husband is dead, she decides to make her own art. Um, she makes pieces of art, but she asks three men to act as artists, so as fronts. Um, the book is not structured as a, you know, linear tale, but um, Harriet is dead when the book opens and there is a book made about Harriet um, from her notebooks, but also from interviews with various people who knew her, her lover, um, some of the men who act as friends, but also family members. Um, and it jumps back and forth between all these various perspectives. It talks a lot about art. The art pieces that Harriet made are described in detail, but it also uh, talks a lot about uh, the perception we have of art and whether it indeed matters uh, to us uh, whether the artist is male or female or black or white or whatever, whether we, we incorporate that into our perception. Uh, it's not easily accessible uh, as, a, uh, as a novel because of that structure. Uh, but if you're interested in art in novels, I can certainly recommend this one. And the second and last question, bonus prompt is, um, who's your favorite artist or favorite, um, name a favorite painting? And I have two favorite artists. The first one is uh, both American from the early 20th century. And the first one is Georgia O'Keeffe. Uh, and I especially like her Deer Skull series. I will put up um, a picture up here, a Deer Skull with Pedernal, Pedernal, which is the mountain in the background. I really love her work, a serene, um, weird but serene. Um, I love these pieces uh, with, the, with the Deer Skull. And the second artist I really love is a Polish artist, but she lived in the United States as well, and that's Tamara de Lempicka. Um, and I especially love her portraits. It's a completely different style than uh, O'Keeffe. It's very lush, but also very geometrical, uh, like this portrait of uh, Madame de Boucard. Uh, but I, I love this style, the colorful expression um, of, um, of the paintings and the way, uh, the, the forms and the color and the geometry. I, I'm not an art critic. What I, do I know? I just love them. Anyway, those were the two um, um, answers for the bonus prompt. And that was it for this tag. Um, uh, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it, even though it's uh, so long. I'm not going to tag anybody because I think this tag has been around for a long time. But if you haven't done it and feel like this is a fun tag to do, please consider yourself tagged. Um, talk to me down in the comments, as always, uh, about art or books or both. And I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.